The West never believed that Mali would survive without its financial aid. But Mali, just like Burkina Faso and Niger, is surviving. And now Mali has announced that beginning next week, it will begin to pay $332 million of its internal debt. This is remarkable, and it is a testament that African countries can do without the West's so-called financial support. You see, before the military leaders of Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso came into the picture, the democratic governments of these countries depended largely on financial aid from Western countries and institutions to run the countries. In fact, the records show that more than 60% of their budget comes largely from Western financial aid. What this simply means is that these countries were highly dependent on the West. To make matters worse, a large amount of the funds funds its way into the pockets of the so-called democratic leaders, leaving the citizens in an impoverished state. Western governments were aware of these, yet they continued to pump the financial aid because it made the African leaders loyal to them. However, the presence of the military leaders changed everything. When the coup occurred in these countries, the West had to cut off their financial aid because they do not support military governments. Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso were all suspended from all the Western countries and institutions that usually gave them funds. This includes the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, the European Union, France and many others. At the time, the general belief amongst Western experts was that the military leaders would struggle to run their countries because the majority of their funds have been cut off. But to the shock of many, the reverse has been the case. In addition to dealing with the severe security issues, these leaders have also focused on improving the growth and development of their countries. These leaders took the initiative to partner with non-Western countries such as Russia, China and Turkey in certain areas of development, including infrastructures and agriculture. It's no wonder then that despite no Western aid, Mali has been able to generate revenue to begin to pay its internal debt. This news was made known by the Malian economic minister, Aluseni Sanu, on Mali's state television. The economic minister acknowledged the increasing challenges that Mali faces in recent times and in terms of debt. This is why the government has made provision to begin to offset some of the debt. Although the economic minister did not give the overall figure for the size of Mali's debt, he revealed that between now and the end of the year, Mali would have paid $332 million of its internal debt. Now, given the fact that Mali is no longer receiving Western aid, it means that Mali is paying off this debt with funds generated internally. As we said at the beginning of this video, this is remarkable and is a testament to the fact that Africa can do without Western aid. The truth is that African countries need to stop receiving financial aid from the West because it has caused more harm than good. It has painted Africa as a needful victim that doesn't have anything to offer and cannot help itself. This is one of the reasons why the West looks down on Africa. Africa needs to break free from this victim mentality and start building itself. And one of the ways to do so is to stop collecting Western aid. Before we continue, we want to remind you to like this video, drop a comment and subscribe to our channel so that you can get more videos like this. Now, the reason why the West will not stop giving aid to Africa is not because they care about Africa, but because aid is a tool of Western exploitation. Think about it. If the West stops giving aid to African countries, do you think that African masses would notice? Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso are good examples of this. When the West suspended financial support to these countries, it did not make any difference to the Burkinabe or Malian citizens. Do you know why? It's because the money doesn't get to them in the first place. Instead, all those billion dollars worth of aid disappear into the pockets of greedy African politicians. In Senegal, for instance, $4 million was budgeted to increase cattle production in the Bakal region. But at the end of the day, only 882 additional cattle ended up being reared. The big question is, where did the money go? Obviously into the pockets of Senegal's politicians. South Africa is another example. The European Union donated $2 million to stage an AIDS awareness play titled Sarafina 2. Although the funds provided a luxury bus for cast and crew, everyone who watched said that the play did little to educate the public about AIDS. In fact, AIDS experts condemned the play as a waste of money because it consumed about 20% of 
of South Africa's entire AIDS budget. At the end of the day, the play was pulled, but the funds simply disappeared. These instances are the norm in most African countries when it comes to Western aid. The painful part is the West is aware of this norm, so why do they continue to pour aid into the continent? It's simple. What they give as aid is little compared to what they receive from Africa. And this is why we say that Western aid is a tool for Western exploitation. According to a 2014 report, Africa receives about $133.7 billion each year in aid, but $191.9 billion is extracted from the continent by the West in the form of debt repayments, multinational company profits, and illicit financial flows. This means that every year, Africa is losing $85 billion, and yet Africa is regarded as the poorest continent in the world. This is pathetic. But how does the West do this? Well, the majority of the aid funds given to Africa by the West come with conditions. Some of these conditions include allowing foreign multinational companies to set up their companies in Africa, giving them access to exploit our resources. Africa is still being used to develop the rest of the world, while it remains stagnant and underdeveloped. In addition to this, Western aid has made African countries to be dependent on the West. This dependency is what has made some African leaders to sign away African resources for peanuts or in exchange for wealth and power. This dependency has also stalled innovation and destroyed local businesses. It has weakened the local markets and dampened the spirit of entrepreneurship. Take, for instance, the corn that was shipped by the UN to Kenya in the form of agricultural aid. Well, a portion of the shipment ends up on the black market where the corn is dumped at extremely low prices. But what do you think will be the effect of this on local corn farmers? Local farmers may as well put down their equipment right away because they will not be able to compete with the UN's World Food Programme. And because the farmers go under in the face of this pressure, Kenya would have no reserves to draw on if there actually were a famine next year. It's a simple but fatal cycle. It's the same in the textile industry. In 1997, 137,000 workers were employed in Nigeria's textile industry. By 2003, the figure had dropped to 57,000. Why? Because so-called good Europeans pack their old clothes into a bag and send them to Africa where they are sold at very low prices. And Africans would prefer to buy these European clothes than clothes made in Africa because of the cost. Honestly, African countries need to do better. The fact is, that aid has done more harm than good to Africa. It has made Africa to be seen as a helpless continent that cannot do anything to help itself. But it's time to change this. Africa can do without foreign aid. If there was no aid, Africa would be forced to find ways to create revenue by itself. It would force Africa to produce and trade with fellow African countries. It would force Africa to improve on infrastructures. When there is no free food that will be sold at low prices, farmers will have to go to the farm. Africa will not fizzle out without aid. Instead, Africa will come out stronger. The leaders of Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso have proven this fact. These countries are surviving without Western aid. Burkina Faso, for instance, has undertaken several projects and launched several initiatives all by itself without any help from the West. The government has launched agricultural programs, road projects, transportation initiatives, improving the aviation industry and so many other things. Burkina Faso was able to do this without help from the West. In Niger and Mali, the situation is also the same. So if these countries which are regarded as the poorest countries in Africa can do this, it means that African countries with big economies such as Egypt, Nigeria and South Africa can do the same. Africa doesn't need help. It has all the natural and human resources it needs to get better. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video.